gonna hunt. And we're talking to a farmer and his daughter. What's your name? Kisundi Anandu. Kisundi Anandu. Yeah. And you? Lonella Nandu. Lonella. Lonella Nandu. How long are you living in here? It's about one year now we started to live here. Okay. But we in Kunaham here since 1992, in and out, planting rice and... You have been occupying here since yes. 1992? Yes, since 92. Okay. Um, how you like it? You like up here? Very good. Very what nice. You? Prefer here than anywhere else. You prefer here? Mm -hmm. Because it's, um, why, why all they like it? Is that the country? It's peaceful, it's comfortable. Your, the I, villagers are really nice people. The atmosphere inside here is one of a kind. Right, the peaceful. Yeah, yeah very right. peaceful. And you have too much of uh, time. Now I know you come inside here to for agriculture. Yeah, that, that yeah. is the reason we That's the reason you was born. And you mobilize your whole family in here. Yeah. Right, your family now is a, a big family or small? No, well, right now it's only three of us. Only no. three of you? Yeah. Okay. Right. So you came in here in 1992? Yeah. To plant rice. To plant rice. You could tell me a bit about how how you meet this area? What it had? When we came inside here, here was a very lonely, depressed place. Uh -huh. well, everybody inside here was poor people and everything. And there was no electricity, no water, nothing. Nothing like that? Nothing. What about the roadways? The roadways were terrible. Very so terrible. You couldn't bring in a car like how you bring a car here? No, at all. Okay, so that is 1992? Yeah. So it was more or less like mud from where? Well, the road had mud because it was deplorable. The mud was just graded. Graded, yeah. yeah. And you just come in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you come and you started to plant rice. Yeah. What about um, the tractors and things you used to be operating? Those days just had about three tractors inside, yeah. And that was government operated? No, no. Those, that was private owners. Private owners? Yeah. Mean that people just come in here and take pieces of land or, or how they are No, no, I just came in. A person, the fella had this piece of land before. He ended up leaving and going to Santa Grande and we knew him well and then he uh, allowed us to come and plant oh. this. Yeah, because I realized that um, the, 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 this, this, this thing here started as a matter of. Um, people started to use the land without yeah. permission. Of Come in and just squat in land. land. Yeah. But now that they regularize it, man, some people... Try. Some people get leased, some don't, don't have. Most I don't have. But you all are established farmers, yeah? Yeah, we are established farmers, and, but we don't have no lease, nothing for this land. Okay. Um, tell me something about the, 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 the crops and so on that you, you meet here. When you in my days when I came here, just People planted Milan like in the hill during the rainy season and the crop time in the flat, in the lagoon. But they planted melon. Melon. Melon, bodhi, bodhi okro. Okro. Then and sort of fine crops, small crops. Well, more okro and bodhi. <laughs> Bashi and all kind of things. No dashing bush. No, no, dashing. We do have dashing, yeah. Okay. So they started to plant those fine crops and after a little while they the melon started to take over. Right. Yeah, well, what happened after um, they started to get lease, rent, get land to rent from the estate. Okay. That Not is from all, the government? No, from the estate, from, well, uh, Bovell Estate as well, we know it from before. Okay. And they started to rent out the land, and that is how all the farmers went, and well, up to now, still planting melon in the estate. Still planting melon, so it had less pressure on, on the swamp. Yes. But what I noticed, uh, the area in the swamp now is a sort of a highland in this area. The swamp is drained or something like that? The the, actually, I feel that the land just... The land just raised for itself? Yes. What about you, Gil? You know the area since you're small. You see this land growing or you, you see the land getting um, higher or you... Well, I would say it's been beef because I think it's being developed Mm -hmm. More now, it's you see another difference in the in, in the village. 
Okay. So it's either people that's pulling the land, okay. or you see where they just because most times inside here, when you see somebody going to build a house yeah. or do anything, they take a pond. Okay. So and they, they dig take, somewhere and yeah, they, they take dig and they fall and they will build. Okay. That is what's going on inside here. But well, one of the other thing I notice here is that once people start to stay inside here, they feel very happy. They want to bring their all their family in here. And then the family building houses also. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. Because if I watch them coming on this side here, they have a lot of houses going. Which is something that we I don't have any problem with. I don't think anybody should have any problem with your your children being near you. Yeah. And, and the thing about it is whoever comes in here to live they are coming inside here to do agriculture. They are coming to do agriculture. Yeah. yeah. Every single person inside Kunaham is farmer. Every from the littlest one to the oldest head is a farmer. Have something they planted. They have something planted. Yeah, they are planting something. What about um the well the crops now you planting is you you move away from rice and I move away from rice and melon and all those crops and I started mango. Why it is you move away from rice? Because in the days when we plant in rice and you go to grade in rice. So they start a grade rice? They start a grade your rice. And when you go, the person who gets first grade, dump right in there. And you get your third grade, you dump on top of his first grade. So, so that's, that's an unfair system? Yes. So, so you come like you're working very hard. Yeah. And, and most of the time, time we, the small farmers go, we always get the last grade. You always get the last grade, and not only that, you, 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 according to the interviews with other guys, they um, it come like they wanted to weed all the fellas out. Yeah. As small farmers, mm -hmm. because you had to pay for almost everything. Everything you had to you pay. You didn't have any farmers. No, no farmers. You had to pay for farmers. Eh? You had to pay for planting, cutting, and those days it's trashing rice, you had to pay. And when you go up there, so you get first grade, you get third grade. Third grade, and you, you do the rice to the best. To the best, yeah. So that caused me to leave it. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, the question is: This farm, this land here, the swamp, started in the days where everybody come and find piece of empty land and they did their squat. Yeah. Right. But after we have government building roads yeah. and trying to regularize the farmer, right? That's true. Yeah. Yes. And you are one of the regularized farmer. In you are bona fide here. Yeah. Right. So you are one of the bona fide farmers that we are expecting here. And you know, what are the crop you already planted now? Well, here I have mangoes planted mm -hmm. and coconuts. Mangoes and coconut. Normally these are highland, highland crops. Yeah. But you find that the land... I just the... tried something. Uh -huh. I planted, well, as I said, 30 trees before. Just try to see what will happen. And I saw the trees growing, so I continue planting on the trees and them. Okay, the trees and them grow up. Grow up and bearing now. Right now you have a bona fide field. Yes. Uh, and you have your mangoes and so on. What about the animals that come into this land? Well, so far I don't have any problem with animals in the land because the farmer who has his animal always have a tie in the back. Oh, you're talking about domestic animals? Yeah. Oh, wild animals, always see plenty of that? Thing. No, no. But I have too much no, no, no yeah. wild animal. You have plenty of parrots. Parrots. Yeah, parrots. Yeah. Parrots. Yeah. parrots that, is um, that is our biggest pest with the mangoes. With the mangoes. Yeah. Because if them parrots really get on a mango tree, they don't know what the mango tree Just yeah. now. All. Right. And when they finish, they come on the tree here and tell me the mango nice. They come <laughs> on the tree making noise, so we should say yeah. the mango nice. They, 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 they had a good time. Yeah. Right. So, um, you have about 200 mango trees? 250. 250? 250 mango trees. Alright, and you find that maintaining that is not difficult? No, it's not difficult now. Not difficult now. I know water and so on does affect it. Well, we does get water in it, but really I never see it affecting the tree to say, it can be dry, dry or, or any withering or anything. But one of the things you will get, uh, according to, to my view, is that you might find my mango being out of season and things like that. You experience it? Yes. Mango well, does, it. yeah. And the reason for that is because the swamp load of water, mm -hmm. the water table, the water table could be high in some 
this area where we are here is being impacted on by the um, by the tide. Yes. Right. So you could get um, mangoes being overseas. Yeah. Right. And you get that. I get and, that. Uh, right. And the other thing that may happen, your mango trees will grow relatively small. The mango tree will go down into the water table, and that level, I have to start to link there. The tree with that roots go down there. That will affect that will that will affect the mango too. But these mangoes could use a uh, different system where you might find they have more they spread them more on the top. Yeah. Well is that apple plant where you could still feed on the top. Yeah. As you say the mango feed is, is how, how how much you eat, huh? Well, the first set of mango started in two thousand and eight. Uh-huh. And two thousand and nine I planted some, two thousand and ten I planted some and two thousand and eleven. I finished planted at the 250 trees. Okay, so 2011, no, now it's 20, 20, 20, 20. So you have nine years of the estate. Yeah, great. So, apparently, you're on good terms. The mango tree is not uh, that's showing any sign of withering. Nothing. And what about the coconuts? The coconuts, and um, we're getting the withering in the coconuts. We're getting withering. Yeah, the yeah. show is not there. Uh, but uh, maybe the. As soon as it started here, yeah. yeah. and, and as soon as it started here, the, the water appears to be a little too much right? because coconut like dry land yes. and it does have a little water here during the rainy yes, season. Yes, yes. So that yeah. is what affects it not bearing as it should. You can not with most of the coconuts now, eh? yeah. the older ones. Mm. Because I think people mention that to me a little longer. But um, the other type of program, the other type of grass and so on that you have here, natural grass growing and so on, is that the natural swamp grass or you have no grass? No, it's the natural swamp grass. Well, it was par grass, bull grass, the, yeah. what we just call cigarette grass. That is the swamp so grass. When you come in here, it had those type of grass? Yes, it had those type of grass and up to now it still have. You still have that? You don't have any other type of grass growing like the savanna grass, for example? No. The invasive species. Mm -mm. They don't have that. No. So you still maintain the savanna. And the, the, the balise, as they just call it here, yeah. still have that, that, that also in the land, right? Yeah. Right. Now, when I ask you about wildlife just now, what I really mean is animals like squirrel. No, no. Like no squirrel, no manicu. They don't have those. No, like no. It have mat around. Oh, it have mat. Yeah, a lot of mat. Right. Guana. And another thing that people talk about where we was more or less interested in is the swamp ducks. And you are not um, seeing any around this area. We have seen some. Well, is it this year? Yes, earlier this year it had a... Uh, Late last year, in December month. In December month, we had some in our pond. Oh, in this pond right here? Yeah. Okay. Well, tell me something about those ducks. When they come in here, they actually lay their eggs. Uh, no, the when them ducks came in here, was mo well mother and father, okay, and, and eighteen chicks. They came with eighteen chicks. Yeah. Yes, but they won't come. Though they fly with the eighteen. No, chicks no, no, like as if those, those chicks walk and come like like. They yeah, well, I mean they, they nest there somewhere, somewhere around, but around, I didn't and see. And they come into the water. But yeah. you wouldn't see them because they're very secretive mm -hmm. in the in the area. Because they come to these visiting ducks, really come down to our warmer climates because they need to multiply. Right, they can multiply in the pool. So they come here and they multiply uh, after they leave. So all we have to have here is sufficient feed, sufficient feed for them during that period. And while they was here, you could see the chicks on them because their wings started to grow, you know? Yeah, and, and, grow. and then they started to come on the bank and you see they start to flap. So the day they leave, like if though they provide food for the nation. Okay. And as much as anybody would like to, it's a hard work. But at the end of it, I, the beauty in what I find in agriculture is that when you produce food for people to eat, you feel happy in your own self. As a young girl growing up, how do you, you visualize, how you, you want to encourage somebody to do agriculture based I, on your experience? Based on my experience, I always encourage people to do agriculture. It's a tough job. But the rewards you get from agriculture is more than what you could get from sitting down in an office and looking. 
because at the end of the day, in order to survive, you need food. So I'm planting your own crops, growing them. I mean, crops that they get all different types of things that happen when you plant it, when you're doing agriculture. But the rewards that you get from them at the end of the day, mm -hmm. it's way better than sitting in an office. But in any case, you know that as young people, people like to go partying and all kind of thing. They want to What you're telling me is more or less a management thing. Yeah. I have a, a pumara, I have a tamarind, I have a mandarin lime, I have a sapodilla, I have pom city, I have West Indian cherry, guava, sour cherry, we have a five fingers, all we have a cashew tree we plant, piwa, we have a, a sour sop, shatine. So, so you have everything we ever talk about as food song here, Nelly? Yeah. Well, actually, we, yeah, we try, we all try. Best, uh, as much fruit trees in the land and as possible. You cannot plant more because the, the space I have, because that is only the little high spot. Because here is a swamp that has always had water, and some trees cannot take, you cannot take the water. These trees actually take the water to buy. No, well, these, all these that are there that I have planted okay. is a high spot, oh that, like, you know. Or they play, they stay on the ice boat. Yeah. So you still feel the effects really of the swamp? Yes. The swamp is still here? Yeah. yeah. Right? It's okay. really wet. You know, you could you could manage this properly and still enjoy the youth and still enjoy yeah. meeting people and everything else. Everything. You know, because because you meet more something. people because yeah. if as a farmer and you hire goods, you want to sell, you meet more people. Some of these yes, is just like a like a old taboo then. Mm -hmm. That is say if you're walking in the land, in the land. We had a work during the hot sun. <coughs> no, that is not the case. And this is what discourages the youths. Because, yeah. you know, youths tend to think because the, the older heads taught them you had to go there and work morning to evening mm -hmm. in the garden. That is what discourages the youths now. Yeah, but if youths understand how agriculture work and realize that you know, it's all about time management and getting the work done. That is the main thing. Agriculture is not as stressful as how long time used to be. Because long time didn't have machinery. Right. Now it have machinery. Well, now it have machinery that makes things easier. Because before when you had to plow land, you yeah. had to go with a fork and right. they, or either you have a bison and you dip. Going. Now there's tractors, mm -hmm. farmers, they, 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 you know, you go, you have a, rot a rotavator, you pass. Now for now that you rotavate the land, and you could pass and plant as soon as you know you pass and you plant. And it's easier. Things are much easier now than it was back before. before. Yes. Therefore, it makes it easier for us, the youths, to do agriculture. Right, it's a more management thing. It's a more of a management thing yeah. and, and the mindset that we use how because because before it was always you know they were for like parents who they like youths like me who have parents who are farmers. If he going all day every day and he working hard and coming home and he tired. But now even now he don't even do that. When he go in the morning, all day he relaxing. Mm -hmm. In the evening, then he go back out, he make, he do it and when he come back and he good. It's way, it's less Yes, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not too much as stress, it's a more organization. Yes. Yeah. Once you organize it, it could be better. Work. So I will always encourage and now, people and now to you have um, transport. Yeah. So Before you have to look for somebody to carry it to the market. Now the, now the, the vendors come to you. 
here, you know, you have electricity and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Electricity, yeah. we have water. Yeah. Although we don't get water every day, but uh, like once a week, once a week. Once you have your tanks, you have water. You can live here like every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, you don't need any food here. Yeah. 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 Well, it was nice talking to you. What's his name again? Mr. Randu. Randu, Mr. Randu. And his daughter? Stella. 